Welcome to the Secrets of College Planning. I'm your host, Anthony Yuva, and today we hope to give you some insight on how colleges recruit for baseball. My guest today is John Conant. He's the pitching coach for Immaculata University, and welcome to the show. Thank you. No problem. Thank you very much. Yeah, so usually I start out my guests is um, where they went to college. Well, I uh, played one year, uh, fall semester, at uh, Miami-Dade South down in Florida. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, due to grades, I had to come back. Uh, I matriculated at Mercer County College. Okay. Uh, ended up at Trenton State College in 91. Uh, we ended up going to the World Series that year. Um, pitched there. Uh, 92 was my last year because I tore my leave in okay. the championship game in the World Series. Wow. So, so how, did, how did you end up going through those different colleges? What was your process? It was actually my head coach got me in touch, um, got me a scholarship. Andy Greener for Eden High School got me a scholarship at uh, Mississippi State. Okay. Um, because of my SAT scores were so low, they wanted me to go down to Miami Dade South and matriculate, get my grades up, and then tr transfer over to Mississippi State. Okay. Unfortunately for me, that didn't happen. Um, but just you know, going out and really, I went out to a lot of colleges myself and tried to promote myself and get them out to look at me in the summer during and, the region ball. And what year did you start this? Um, I started it really late. I started it my senior year. Most people should be starting their junior year uh -huh. doing it. Wow. So, so now uh, you ended up graduating from college. Mm, no. Okay, <laughs> so uh, what, what ended up happening once you got out of college? I, unfortunately, I, I dropped out because um, I wasn't getting drafted. I was supposed to get drafted in 92, but because I tore my labrum, surgeries aren't the way they are today, where mm -hmm. you, you come back quickly. I, I dropped out of college, I joined the Army oh. and National Guard. Okay. Got into that. How many years did you do that? I did that three years and then 11 years for the National Guard, um, and then I became a chef. Whoa. And was the chef at, uh, executive chef at Princeton Wegmans. Oh, really? For a while, yeah. How do you like that? Yeah. So how did uh, Immaculata University get you as the pitching coach? Well, I, I came and coached, when I came back home, I was in Arizona for six years, I came back and got in the pitching coach at Hopewell Legion. Um, my ex-coach, uh, Fred Walters, at Ewing, Ewing Post 314, he uh, was like, what are you doing? And I'm like, well, you didn't ask me to coach. He goes, well, you didn't ask me. So we went back and forth. <laughs> Needless to say, the following year, uh, I ended up being his pitching coach for him. And, uh, this was that, Ewing High School? Ewing Legion. Oh, Ewing during Legion. During the summer. Okay. Yeah. Um, that lasted up until 2009 where I took over for him as manager. Um, ended up winning manager of the year. I had a ball player, uh, Matt Hausman, that played for me for Ewing Legion. Ended up going to Immaculata. Okay. Um, said they were looking for a pitching coach. Uh -huh. um, went up, interviewed with then the head coach, uh, Patrick Swift. Um, interviewed for that day, liked, liked my resume. Um, brought me on board that fall, 2012. And uh, he left to go join his wife up at St. John's as a hmm. softball, assistant softball coach. Okay. And they brought in Brian Torresani and he kept me on. And wow. we've been a happy family ever since. And the team's been doing pretty well? Yes, sir. We uh, came in third last year. Um, came in third in the playoffs last year. Oh, to great. At Mercy, lost to Gwinnett Mercy four to nothing. Wow! All right. So we won the academic award for our conference and a sportsmanship award for our conference. So you only been there a couple of years, then? Three years. Oh, fantastic! Yeah. So now, um, what's the process that a parent should take for their son or their daughter that's playing softball uh, to go to college? What's the process that they would have to take? Where, where do you start? You know. When's the really? year that you usually start? Is it freshman or sophomore year? or did, did uh, Your junior year, early junior year. Okay. Um, you start getting out. Start really looking at the schools that you want to go to. 
not necessarily you know where you dream of going, but be realistic. Um, whether it's D1, D2, D3, mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of myths out there about the D1, D2 giving out more money than D3 schools. Okay. Because um, they got to spread their scholarships around. We we give out academic money, which tends to be more than um, D1, D2 gives out to one individual player. So you're saying at a Division One, a Division Two type school, um, do they break the scholarships up? Is yeah, that how they do it? some D1 will have 11 scholarships, D2 will have nine scholarships, and they might break one scholarship between two two players. I see. So, yeah, or they might spend a lot on one impact, high impact player. Gotcha. Um, but I would, you know, go out, pick 10 schools that you are really interested in, major-wise, see if those schools have your major. Um, contact them. They, we all have questionnaires uh -huh. on our website that you go out and fill out. Okay. Um, and then from there, we take it in. We look at your, you know, GPA and your SAT scores. And if, you know, they exceed or... Or what we're looking for, then we'll contact you. I got you. And then, so when's usually that contact stage? Uh, for D three, it's, it's junior year. Junior year. I mean, going we can into we year. can contact freshman sophomore year. Usually, it's you know the kids start doing it their junior year. So yeah. So Division one and Division two can only contact junior year going into senior right. year. So, right. so a Division three type school can contact freshmen to all the way through. Senior, yeah. Okay. So, so a parent that's out there, uh, if they want their son to to get into baseball, um, they should know to get start as early as possible. Yes. Right. Yes. So, so what are some of the things that um, colleges do at the baseball level? Uh, you know. For kids that you know want to want to continue to play, what what are some of the what are some of the avenues that that some of these kids should take, um, so then college coaches can recognize them? Well, I think, and there's a school for everyone. Um, it's right. You you have to self promote yourself. Um, whether it's filling out our questionnaires, it's uh, you know going doing AAU showcases, playing on AAU teams, um, Legion ball, uh, high school, you know, I'm, I would rather go see a kid play Legion ball and high school baseball. That way I can see their character, you know, how they perform on the field mm -hmm. rather than watch a video. I mean, we, there are recruiting websites you can go on to, right. which will do videos for you. Um, set you up and give you a whole profile, which we tend to use a right. lot too. Um, there is so many avenues you can take. Uh, it really comes down to it's getting your grades and having the grades to get into school. Yeah. Other, so, so what type of grades does a Division three type school look we, for? We we look for three O GPA, uh, eleven hundred on two parts, uh, thirteen hundred and above three parts. Okay, so, so, and being that you were a student that had tough in grades, yeah. you know what to, what to ask the, the students yes. to make sure that they get in. I am very big on grades. So, Funny. So, so <laughs> Ironically. Really, so really what it comes down to is you know that the, the grades mean a lot for when they graduate. Maybe some of these kids do want to go to the major league level. Grades are everything. Major league level is tough. I think 2% of college athletes, baseball athletes make it to the majors. Sure, absolutely. So, or get drafted. Absolutely, yeah. That, that, that's tough. Let's get into college first. Exactly. <laughs> and exactly. graduate. Now, now, there are some myths out there that parents have, uh, you know, that sports take a lot of time from these, these uh, students. Um, at a Division three level yeah. school, is, is that the case? They're all pretty much all the same, but academics come first. Division three, so um, and I'm sure it's the same at Division one, Division two. Uh, you know, you're not missing practice, or you're not missing a class because of practice. Mm -hmm. You're usually late to practice because of class. Okay. Um, games, if you're not going to play that day and you have a class, you know, we're going to tell you to go to class. 
Um, you know, if you're going to go to the game that day, there's a piece of paper that we give to you. You bring to your professor that you fill it out, they fill it out, so your professor knows okay. that uh, you won't be there. Um, it's all about time management with, you know, it's basically life. Yeah. It's the same way. You got to sure. manage your time right. around everything. So, now it's, that, that's a big myth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we got kids at work. We got kids that play baseball really? and go to class too. So. And how does that work? They work at night, you really? know, to have classes in the morning and then baseball in the afternoon. Oh, my God. And then when are the games? Usually on the weekends? Games are, you know, one, two during the week, and then our conference games are Friday, Saturday, double headers. Oh, okay. And, and um, they, they play baseball in the fall as well in the, in the spring? Or yes. Is it fall, fall, we're more relaxed. Um, you know, we're only allowed six weeks of practice um, and I believe 20 hours a week. Okay. So, you know, four days here and there, you know, we get away with. And uh, so there, there's really not a lot of time taken away from their schoolwork. And how about in the spring? So in the spring, how many games are there in the spring? Uh, we have uh, 34 scheduled. And then the, so, then the and tournament? plus practices, you know. Then, you know, we go to spring down in Florida, Fort Pierce. Um, most most schools go away for a week. Um, you'll come back, um, then you'll play your conference games, out of conference games. But kids, you, you got to go to class. You know, go to class. So how does that class. work when you're away? How does how does class work when you're away? Well, it, it depends. You know what days you have class. Um, if we're away on the road, like I said, we'll give you a sheet of paper. Um, to give to your professor. If we're home, you'll usually come late to the game. Gotcha. Yeah. You're, say we have a three o'clock game. We we want you to be there at one. If you have a class till one thirty, you come at one thirty. Gotcha. It really doesn't. Interf we don't interfere with classes at all. And and um, and the workout for for an athlete for a baseball player at, at the college level. What what are they looking at? At, at is it the same type that they would do in the high school level or legion level? I uh, I hope not. <laughs> I hope we're a little better. Um, okay. We'll from the pitching aspect. I know we'll do a lot of long tossing. We'll do a lot of band work. Um, we'll do a lot of lifting. Um, nothing too much over the head because you know we want to keep the shoulder. Uh, flexible mm -hmm. and you know a lot of core work because you, know, you need that for pitching a lot of you know um, conditioning so, so there is a lot especially in the off season there's there's a lot of lifting and workouts involved so what, what are they doing throughout what what's the process when a student accepts to go to school there what's what's the process that a student takes and a whole year of, of uh, baseball? If pit, from a pitcher, once they're accepted into school, mm -hmm. um, I'll send them out our programs so they get a head start going into the fall. They'll know our lifting program, they'll know our throwing program, and hopefully they're doing that. Okay. I mean, I can't keep an eye on them, mm -hmm. so, and no coach can. Um, so hopefully they're following the lifting program. That's, you know, really look for a nice in shape kit. So yeah. then by, so then the fall comes, uh, they go into the baseball, uh, season of, of a short baseball season. Ball. Right. Uh, so what, what ends up happening after the season ends? Well, that's where the kids are on their own, division three. Okay. They're not from... What uh, happens at a Division One compared to a Division Three? I think the, they the have time? individual workouts okay. with the kids, limited time. Okay. We're only we're not allowed to um, work out with the kids at all okay. until we start back up in January. Okay. So end of October till January nineteenth, let's say we're starting this year. We can't. I, we can talk to them. We just can't make make it mandatory for them to work out. But do you give them some type of schedule we of give what them, they can do? Yeah, we give them lifting workouts and we give them uh, 
we have workouts in the mornings with uh, one of the, I believe it's the soccer coach does morning workouts. Okay. So. And then the spring comes. So spring then they comes, do their spring ball. All hands on board. Okay. And then after the spring season's over, do they do now summer? Is it summer session of some sort? Well, we'll like, yeah. We'll put him on a coll collegiate uh, baseball league okay. team. Um, I might change it this year because, um, especially pitching wise, you know, you, there's a lot of wear and tear through the season from fall, you know, then through spring or throwing a lot of innings. The guys that throw a lot of innings, I, uh, I really don't want to throw a lot of innings during the summer because mm -hmm. um, I really, you know, we do care about these kids. They're like family to us and mm -hmm. like our own kids. So we don't want them to get hurt in any way. And we're very big on arm care. So we'll, you know, they'll either go off and play in like a Legion League if they're able to right. or eligible. Um, we'll send them to a collegiate league or uh, they'll just stay on a weightlifting program, a long tossing program, and throw a couple bullpens here and there during the summer. Oh, wow. So, so it's a really an all-year-round type of thing where uh, these kids are working out or it, training or staying yes. in, involved in the sport yes. of some sort. Yeah. Now, do you find that uh, some kids at a Division three level school, do they play other sports as well? Uh, we had a couple, but then they tend to see it's a little difficult. Okay. Then they, you know, either go one way or the other. Either We had a kid play soccer and they Another one played basketball last year, okay, and they just went strictly baseball this year. Now, is there some type of regimen that they take uh, food-wise as well? Do you, do you train them on what to eat, what not to eat? Uh, we we try to, but again, <laughs> it, it, it's tough to yeah. keep an eye on on thirty four kids. Yeah, yeah. So, so is there any type of um, equipment regimen that they have at the school that? Oh, uh, uh, we have full gym. Um, we have, there's an, uh, you know, indoor all turf facility where they do their workouts. And mm -hmm. so. Now, how do you go about finding these kids? I, like I said, um, I got a lot of contacts around here from Legion Ball. So, so I, here being I the central New Jersey central area. Central New Jersey area or, you know, upstate or northern New Jersey, not upstate like we're in New York. <laughs> um, but I got a lot of connections Legion wise. So I get, you know, a lot of Legion coaches contacting me, come look at this kid. Right. Um, a lot of high school coaches I have contacts with, you know, I'll give them a call. Who do you have coming up? Uh, we'll go, you know, like I said, on a, a lot of recruiting sites to see kids okay. if they fit our criteria with GPA and SAT scores. Um, we do do a lot of showcases. Um, and there's a lot of camps that we go to. So a lot of families sometimes say, um, you know, I always go to a Division three school and they say they have nothing, no money, no nothing available. Um, what do you say to those in that of, of parents on, on that? Is there the, money available? The, there is a lot of money available. And it depends on your financial background, too. Okay. You know, that it's kind of personal. But right. Yeah, I, we tend to give out a lot more, I, I, I would think, than the D2, D1 schools do. So, so there are a lot of Division three type schools out there that are able to do different types of Financial uh, aid packages, yeah. Okay. Um, so, and how do, how, do you exp how do you express this to families? What, what do you go through? What's the process you go through? Uh, it, it's really just, it's, it's selling your school. It's not lying to a kid telling them, you know, it's, he's going to start right away right. or anything it's like that. It's being honest. It's not over recruiting. You know, we're, we're trying to get as many kids as we can in for our program. We want impact kids that are going to, you know, be involved right away. Yeah. Um, we're not going to bring in 50 kids just to bring in 50 kids. That's not fair to the kid where he could go to another school. And how many kids do you recruit to, to actually get the number that you're looking for? Uh, 
It differs from year to year. I think we had 40 in this year. We brought that down to 34. We could bring it down even less. Than and how that. many do you actually take out of that 40? Uh, we took 30, 34. Wow. Yeah. Oh, so it's a pretty large number yeah. That, yeah. that you take out of that. And sometimes it happens to where, you know, kids take themselves out of the equation by the time spring comes, whether oh. it's grades or, you know, they don't think they're going to get enough playing time. Is there is there a lot of kids that do uh, a walk-on uh, type of opportunity? Um, we do give walk-on. A lot of schools uh, give walk-on opportunities. Um, that that's a tough road to go through, to be honest. Uh -huh. um, it it's probably a lot easier at the JUCO level mm -hmm. um, than it is at D1, D2, D3. Not saying it's impossible. And JUCO uh, for those those out there junior is college. Doing junior college. Yes. Okay. Um, it's yeah, we do get walk-ons, but usually the team is uh, compiled of kids that we recruit in. Mm -hmm. So uh, what would be the process for a walk-on if someone actually wanted to come to school? They just go to, they walk get accepted in, to the school and they just walk on to the they're, team? They're accepted. If you're in the school, you are eligible to go out. If you have the grades, you're able to go out to any, any, for any sport you want. Really? You go see the coach, find out when the and tryouts then, are. And then, of course, you have to, you have to make the team. And then you got to make the team. <laughs> that's the <laughs> so that's the difficult part is right. because you're, you're competing against all the other kids that are there that have gotten some kind of money from the school to come there to, to go to school well, as well as to play sport. Well, that's not saying those kids didn't get money oh, uh, to get absolutely. into school. But you're going up against kids that we have seen and we've brought in right. and know that can play. Okay. So, that's, so that's the difficult part of right. it. Yeah. Where at a Division One level school, uh, they have scholarships where those kids don't. Yes. Unless they got a scholarship for academics at the school. Yes. Right. Yep. So, so that's how it, that would work. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so the uh, w what territories do you cover, and is there multiple people like yourself out there <coughs> looking for kids? Yes. Um, all five of us: uh, head coach Brian Torsani, uh, Keith Curley. He's the assistant head coach, uh, me, uh, Greg Murgatroyd is our outfield coach, and Joe Crane is our middle infield coach. Um, we're all out there. I'm, I thought New Jersey would be my area. Um, tends to, um, um, all of us are all over the place. Um, it's hard for me in New Jersey, actually, to recruit. Really? In my own backyard. Yeah, because there's a lot of schools in Jersey. Sure state schools that they can go to that are less expensive mm -hmm. so so how do you how do you find those kids what <sighs> what are some of your steps that you take to to find those kids it it's, it's a juggling act it's <laughs> it's selling yourself and it's selling your program really and that's it yeah so what uh what do the kids need at the high school level um, athletic-wise to get to a Division One, two, II, or three level type school? Is there different uh, abilities that they need? Well, we look for a seven below and a six-yard dash. Okay. Um, we have to see a, a ceiling, you know. It, you got to have, I don't know, it, it factor or, you know, something that looks projectable to us that we can say, yeah, we can see in maybe, you know, two years that he could play for us. Mm -hmm. um, or he can be an impact guy right away. So can you but tell by comes, the swing that they have or the yeah, throwing the, the ability? Yeah, mechanics. You know, I, I've taken guys that had horrible mechanics, but I know I could work with. Um, you know, I got 6'4 guy. Six six guys coming in. Wow, you can't teach height. Sure. So, you know, but you can teach the right way to throw the ball, the right mechanics. Um, swinging, same thing. Swing's a little tough because once you get in that bad habit of yeah. a bad swing, that's typically the swing you're going to have mm -hmm. um, the rest of your career. And throwing wise, throwing wise, uh, same thing. You know, catchers. 
we we're looking for two one below. You know, average is a two point oh. So if you're a two one high school, you know, with growing your your age, you know, you're gonna put weight on, muscle. Sure. You know, that number will start going down. Hmm. And go out and get a trainer. You know, get in shape. And that's the right. key. Yeah. Right. Well, we're coming to the end of our show. Um, so what I usually ask my guests uh, is um, what type of advice do you want to give to the parents out there if their son or their daughter wants to play softball at the college level? What, what, what do they want to, what do you want to leave with them to, to say, hey, this is what we have to do to get, get to college? From my past mistakes is <laughs> grades, 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 really. Honestly, um, that's the biggest part. That's honestly the first thing we look at is grades, and then we go from there. And and uh, ability-wise, ability, you want to go out and get yourself a personal trainer. You know, there's a lot of trainers in the local area. You, you're more than willing to do that. Um, you just got to be able to put the work in all year round. Great. Well, thank you very much for coming. I appreciate it. It's a pleasure. Thank yeah. you, Anthony. All right. And you've been watching The Secrets of College Planning. I'm your host, Anthony Uva. Until next time. <laughs>